Well, welcome to Relevant and Reformed. Uh, once again, I am Pastor Rich Kukin from the Pocono Reformed Bible Church, and this is my faithful cohort, Nick Costanzo. Hello. And we also have with us our tech uh, assistant, uh, Kyle Learn. Now, Kyle likes to stay behind the camera. Yeah, he doesn't like any attention. Does not like any attention. I think, Nick, if people went back in our archives, they might be able to find one. I think we had him come out once. We did. It's Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day. Yeah. And he came out and he said, hello, everyone. And then he went back. Uh, but we were actually glad he went back because we said when he is out here, he makes us yeah, look bad. Look bad. Yeah. <laughs> he, makes, he makes us look bad. But I've been thinking about it ever since. And, you know, it, you know he is such a, a gifted, godly, you know, good looking guy that if any of the girls listening wanted to, you know, get his phone number, they could write us and we could screen that for legitimacy. Would, yeah. And we provide pop, it though, and we would provide yeah. it. <laughs> we got to find him a Mrs. Kyle a Mrs. Learn. Kyle yeah. Learn, a Mrs. Kyle Learn. Well, we'll let him stay behind the camera <laughs> today. But poor folks, Kyle. but yeah, yeah, poor Kyle. We we tease him probably too much, but probably. he hangs in there with us. It's he wonder, does. It's He's, wonderful. It, it's a good thing it's at his studio, or he probably <laughs> or wouldn't this show would not up be anymore. happening, and he wouldn't yeah. show up anymore. No, he would not be yeah. here. We could not be bullish on reform theology. There we go. Uh, but hey, everyone, welcome back, and and we apologize that there was a lag in some of our recording. Uh, that was my fault. Well, it was a mixture. I mean, yeah, we'll I was talk, out of town. We'll talk about you were out of town. I was out of town. I think there was some sickness involved there for a while. Uh, but we are back, at least for today. And we'll be talking about that in the future. And the fact that I was the one uh, welcoming you and not Nick, as he usually does, uh, portends that we are in a bit of a transition here uh, for Relevant and Reformed. And that's why I did the welcome today. I'm basically going to be interviewing you, Nick, mm -hmm. uh, right? If you don't mind that. It'll uh, be different. It's going to be different, and that's yeah. why you've got the main camera. Yeah. I like that <laughs> camera pointed over there most of the time. Well, I don't, so okay. we're going to live with it today. All right. Uh, but anyway, we are, we are friends in, in a bit of a transition here. And um, Nick, why don't, you know, because we're in a transition, and we'll get to the that you know latest part of the transition, but going back, you and I had the privilege of meeting, I think it was 2018, during our core group meetings yes. for the Pocono Reformed Bible Church. My wife, Margaret, and I were coming out once a month on Monday evenings, meeting at our home in East Stroudsburg, and um, you joined us. I think, I think Jess was expecting at the she time. She was. Yeah. And so she was not joining us at first, but you were... Uh, part of that faithfully. And then in 2019, we moved out here. And why don't you share with our, our friends, um, when we met anyway, what were you doing at the time as far as employment? You know, sure. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so when I met Pastor Kukin, I was a high school history teacher, which I was up until three weeks ago. In New Jersey, interestingly in New enough. Jersey. Our church is in Pennsylvania, but you were yeah. teaching in New Jersey. Yeah, just driving over the border like most people in the Poconos yeah, right. <laughs> to go to right, work. Right, right. And uh, high school history teacher, baseball yeah. coach, yeah. mock trial yeah. advisor. Yeah. Yeah. So that was your calling. That's what you were doing. And, it was. And, and as Nick and I got to know each other, for our brothers and sisters' uh, benefit, um, I just had a growing sense in all honesty, sincerity, and humility that uh, part of the reason God called me and Margaret to the Poconos was not so much about us as it was about Nick and Jess. And uh, what I mean by that is I was having this growing burden in my personal devotional life, prayer life, uh, that Nick may possibly be called to the pastoral ministry. And I think I gave you a booklet uh, written by Dr. John Sidema. Called published. to preach. Yeah, called to preach. Yeah. It was question mark. Called yeah. to preach question mark. Yeah, we had lunch together. Yes, that's right, at the Huddle House. Yeah, and I had never <laughs> thought about it before. Right, really, right. I had never considered the idea Right. At all. Right. So I kind of hit you cold with that. Like, oh, okay. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll read and, this. And, yeah, called to preach question mark. Dr. John Sidham. It was published by Mid-America Reform Seminary, and I was serving at the board on the time, as I recall, uh, when that was published. And I gave that to you. And then, Nick, we kind of went into a, I'll call it a low period. We didn't really talk about it a lot at no. that point. You weren't approaching me about it. I didn't want to push you into something that you were not called to. And we kind of just let it let it lie. Yeah. And then uh, I know Jess thought it was, you know, not maybe the you know the best idea right off the bat. I remember Jess was like, what? You know, what ministry? What? Yeah, I, I did blindside her. <laughs> like I, I did to you. Yeah, you did to your I wife. I went home for okay. lunch and said, uh, what do you think about me going to seminary? And she looked at me like I had two heads. Okay, okay. Which I don't really blame her. She no, thought right. I was just going out to lunch. <laughs> right. Little did she know. Little did she know. Okay. And um, I'd never thought about it. I did blindside her with it. She was 
pretty adamant. I don't think this is I don't a good think idea. so. I know she's close with her family. She has a dear family, as you do. Yeah, here both in the, in the here area. In the Poconos, yeah. yeah. So it's a big decision. Now, um, the fact that I would approach you in God's providence about possibly going to a Reformed seminary, that in itself is a bit of a shock because of your faith background. Do you mind sharing yeah. a little, little bit about that? Sure. So I grew up in a fairly typical evangelical Baptist church. Um, dear Saints, uh, I wouldn't agree with some of the theology looking right. back on it, right. but I learned to love Jesus there. And yeah. uh, my parents are faithful Christians, members Amen. of our church. Amen. They were always reformed in their sensibilities. Yes. They, you know, they've been looking for that, but there really was no reformed church right. in the Poconos. And, and you know that Margaret and I view your folks, uh, Lucian and Becky, as our Priscilla and Aquila. I mean, if mm. it wasn't for their providential leading of the Lord, praying for 30 years for a reformed church in this area, yeah. uh, that was a major signal from God to me and Margaret that this is where he was calling us. And yeah. so, you know, God bless your parents. Praise God for your parents. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we left we left that church right after meeting you and the core group. Yeah. Um, we've been looking for a Reformed church for a while. Right. Although I still would have not wanted you to put any water on my children. <laughs> at, at that, that time. Po- at that point. No, not initially. I changed my mind fairly quickly. <laughs> um, although I'd been thinking about it. Right. And, and uh, then there was a delay, and you thought it was because you're Italian and I'm Dutch. Yeah, so I you said, thought... wait a second. It's because we have an Italian last name that you won't baptize these kids. Oh, can I put Vander something? Yeah, Vander, Vander Costanzo. Vander Stanzo. You're Vander Stanzo. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah, and when you approached me, um, I thought about it. I read that book probably three or four times. Yeah, yeah. And I had a little bit of a health scare yes. in the middle of all of it. Wow, I had forgotten which, that which I, you did. I believe the Lord used in my life. Wow. And I was home from work for a month. Yeah. And I read the book again. And I distinctly remember laying on the couch watching Stephen Lawson yeah. at John MacArthur's church. Yeah. And I remember at one point he slammed his hand on the table because there was a... I'm not going to protect the guy. It was Joel Osteen was on Larry King, and he kept saying, well, I don't know, Larry. And yeah. st- and Stephen Lawson said, well, give us some men who know the truth. <laughs> right, amen. And amen. I turned to Jessica, and I said, I know the truth. <laughs> amen. And then uh, we didn't talk about it for another six months to yes. a year. Yes, I felt like there was a lag in there. There was a lag. We just did not talk about it. We were praying and thinking yes, about yes, it. Yes, 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 And then one day my wife walked into the living room and said, hey, I think you should do it. And I oh, said, wow. do what? And wow. she said, I think you should go to seminary. Yeah. See, the Lord was answering prayers at that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, um, you know, then then you and I picked up the I'll call it, picked up the conversation together. Yeah. And then the, I think uh, you said, well, maybe I could start taking some online courses. I think you were looking at Puritan. Uh, yeah, I did Rapids. take one. Yeah, and then, but you needed an elder endorsement. I did. And so uh, that would come from your pastor and elders. Well, we're not incorporated yet, and, and not at that time. Hopefully, very soon we will be. Uh, so I had to be in touch with the Pompton elders, who are our commissioning, supervising consistory and brothers. Uh, to get that endorsement of you, but then they wanted to meet you. Yeah. They didn't just take my word for it. You know, I said, "What am I, chopped liver?" You know, <laughs> I'm, this is a good man. And I'm like, "We'll, we'll mm-hmm. find out ourselves." But they did. They had you come, I think, with Jess. With Jess, yeah. yeah. We, we met with them yeah. for an hour and a half. Yeah. And um, we we prayed the whole time, Lord, make this really obvious if you want this to happen. Yeah. And we went and said, maybe they'll be hesitant. And they were all in. Yes. It was amazing. The, amazing. The, the way they rallied around you and felt the confirmation of God's call in you and wanting to support you. And uh, so they were willing to sign the, the elder endorsement uh, yeah. that you could take those courses. Now, since then, uh, as the Lord continued to affirm the call, Nick, you actually, in fact, if you don't mind me sharing with our, our brothers and sisters, sure. you actually made a chart of about three or four different seminaries. Yeah. Pros, cons, costs per credit hour, uh, family issues, work issues, financial issues, very thorough study. And the Lord uh, ultimately led you to uh, apply to Reformed Theological Seminary in Charlotte, in Charlotte, North the Carolina, Char- yeah, the Charlotte campus, Charlotte, North Carolina. So uh, again, you kind of made that application on faith. In fact, Nick came up to me after a, uh, a worship service. He did this periodically and goes, "Are you sure this is going to work? Are you sure this is going to be okay? <laughs> you sure we can do this financially?" And I kept, "Oh, well, Nick, if you are called, God, God, where He guides, He provides." Yeah, I, I, I didn't believe you at first. <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't believe me, but Mark and I have lived that by the grace of God. Yeah. And I knew he was, we do the same for you and Jess. So, uh, well, picking up on that theme, if you don't mind, so you apply and, uh, then you gave me a phone call, I'm going to say a month ago, roughly. And you said, can Jess and I stop over for five minutes? Yeah. You remember that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Why don't you tell the folks what that was about? Yeah. So we, it, it all happened in one day. We were still worried about money. Right. We really were because we have three small children. Right. Inflation going crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. 
the housing in Charlotte's fairly expensive yeah, compared yeah. to East Stroudsburg. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I got a call earlier that day, and they said, hey, are you interested in the house right near the seminary? And I said, yes. Because you needed a house. Yeah, it was greatly reduced. and we, We've seen it since. It was great. And then I'm driving home right after that phone call, and I found out I got a full scholarship, wow. which was a huge wow. answer to prayer. Right, and you had to tell yeah. us in person. Yeah, I felt like I had to tell you in person. <laughs> so you, you came up with Jess. The kids are in the car. You come up on the porch, Margaret and I come out, and you just blurted it out, and yeah. we all started crying. Yeah. And it, we, I think we joined in prayer, mm -hmm. just praising God. Yeah, it was praising amazing. God for amazing his, answer for his prayer. provision. Oh, glory be to God. So we asked the Lord to make it obvious, and it seems like every door wasn't just open, was blown open. It was blown open. Yeah, it was blown open, and we're very excited to go. But we are sad to be leaving Pocono for a time. Yes, yeah. Well, Sunday you were at Pompton um, yes. to say farewell to those folks, and they are taking love offerings for you and so on, for which we're very grateful. Extremely generous. Yeah, a very generous congregation, and we're grateful for that. But we we missed you on Sunday, and I think you and I texted back and forth. I guess we both better get used to this. Yeah, you know. So that's that's where we're at. That's what I mean. You know, to our, our dear friends listening, watching. Um, it's a transition that, that Nick and Jess will be heading out, you know, pretty soon. So that actually puts the whole relevant and reformed, you know, big question mark over that. It's, you know, speaking called the preach question mark. Now we're going relevant and reformed question mark uh, because um, with your transition, we're going to have to see if we're able to do it, you know, kind of remotely. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, unless we can get Kyle in front of the camera and take your place, maybe that would be. <laughs> he's going, no, like, he's going this. like this. No. Or um, a different co-host. Yeah, or, or a different co-host, but it would never yeah. be the same. I mean, Nick, let's oh, face well, it. No, you. I mean, never. You, you carry this not, thing. So, so no, it is true. And so um, we'll have to see. It's to our brothers and sisters. That's really my point, that we're yeah. going to have to see of where this goes. We are so grateful, though, are we not? We have gotten so much encouragement and affirmation for these podcasts. We, You were just telling me before we started recording the people who have come to Pocono Reform Bible Church because of the podcast, or at least partly because yeah, of the podcast. Yeah, they've told me that they... Yeah. We had a guy walk in, and he said... Hi, Nick. And I said, uh, do I know you? And he said, no, no, I watched the podcast. Right. I was like, okay, okay. Right, right. So they feel like they know us when they yeah. come, even though we've never met some of these folks. So again, Kyle, thanks for the use of your gifts. Praise God for that outreach. But Nick, we are in a transition. Uh, I think uh, before you depart, we'll be able to record maybe one or two more. I think we agreed we would look at um, the first question and answer and the second question and answer of the Heidelberg Catechism yeah. as our final ones for now, I'll say. Uh, but as we, we close out this recording, uh, I'd like to read, you know, if you don't mind, uh, a good portion of Psalm 139. Oh, it's my do. favorite psalm. And with you and Jessica and your precious children uh, departing soon, um, I want to read this psalm, uh, not only, well, not only, but especially for, for you and Jess, but for our, our, our viewing friends too, that um, the Lord promises never to leave us or fail us or forsake us wherever we go, whatever we're doing as his children. And so um, let's turn to God's word mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll read this, Nick, and then maybe you would, uh, would close out the recording for today. Sure. Okay, thank you. Psalm 139, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will, hold, will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. 
Nick, those are God's promises mm-hmm. to you and Jess and to your precious children and, and to our, our friends, our brothers and sisters who are viewing this or listening to this today. God will never leave us, fail us, or forsake us. The plans he has for us are to give us hope in a future, and by his grace, he always uses us for his glory. And he's been doing that through you uh, in these many podcasts that we've recorded together. It's been an honor and a pleasure, and we will seek his will and leading yeah. uh, during this time of transition as to where uh, Relevant and Reformed uh, goes from here. Well, thank you, Pastor. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome, Nick. I mean every word. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to those two that we're going to record. Yeah, so. we'll, do, we'll try to get two more in at least. Great. All right, thank you. Well, thank you very much for listening along with us as we look at something a little more personal than yeah, <laughs> some of our yeah. other podcasts. Yeah. But please join us next time on Relevant and Reformed. Thank you. God bless you all.